quite juicy, to be honest. Greetings, my esteemed Laddingtons. I have read a book. Well, I haven't read all of it. It's quite thick and also quite juicy. Uh, it's Piero San Giorgio's latest book. And before I begin to talk about this book, I can just recommend his previous book, Survive the Economic Collapse. I don't have it here because a good friend has borrowed it, but I'll make a separate book review on that later on because it is um, yeah, very interesting. I mentioned it in my own book, Dauntless, as well. And um, I would say that you can read the two in um, relation to each other because the first one deals with, as the name suggests, an economic collapse and this book deals with, um, yeah, as also the name suggests, um, chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear events. So, uh, you know, a lot of um, um, bad things that might happen. I will also talk about Guillaume Fais, the convergence of catastrophes in another video, but basically that concept is, you know, if something happens and something else happens at the same time, uh, so you have now a coronavirus outbreak and the economy goes down the drain at the same time. So it's a convergence of two catastrophes, obviously interlinked as well. But if a lot of things happen at the same time, it may cause the whole system to collapse. And um, I've said this before, I'll say it again, and I'm hardly the first one to say it either. Piero has talked about this for a very long time you know, that our system is very fragile. So the political solution for that is to, you know, focus more on the local economy. But I've talked enough about that. Now I want to talk about the book. And also, last thing before I get into the book, Piero did an interview with me on his channel a while back, about two years ago, I think. You can check it out. I will link it um, in the description box below as well. Now, I said I haven't read all of it, because it's not really a book you need to read from, you know, beginning to the end. You can just, as I did, go directly to the biological part, because obviously, as we are quarantined and in isolation now, uh, not really in isolation, but I say it for dramatic effect, I went to the biological uh, part. Now, of course, the chemical and um, radiological and nuclear are also interesting but not as relevant at this moment in time, and I wanted to get this video done um, quickly enough. Uh, and it's quite thick and it's a lot to um, to deal with. Also, a special shout out to Arctos, who always manages to make the most aesthetic of books. Very, um, very aesthetic. Well done, Arctos. So anyway, the style of the book is similar to his previous book and it's really easy to access the information especially because he does something interesting he puts in fictional chapters based upon real scenarios at the end of each chapter and then the knowledge is sort of interwoven in the um in the story so it's easier to you know access abstract information uh, because it can be a bit a bit heavy otherwise so in terms of style of writing, I uh, really like it. And uh, I learned a few new things in this book, which I will, um, I will share with you. So I had, of course, heard of the Spanish flu, but I had no idea it was as severe as it actually was. And uh, of course, it often gets overshadowed by perhaps the greatest tragedy of all time, which is, of course, the First World War. Now, the reason for it being called the Spanish flu, it's not because it originated in Spain or anything. It actually came from, to no one's surprise, it came from China, but it was called the Spanish flu because Spain was not involved in the First World War and therefore they could report on casualties, whereas the French, they didn't really want to do it because, um, you know, they didn't want lower morale and say like, oh, you know what, all of our young men have died in, uh, in a flu, then the Germans would have known. So they call it the Spanish flu because of this, but it has nothing to do with Spain otherwise, except for, you know, a lot of Spanish people died. A lot of Europeans overall died and Americans, but it originated in um, China. Now, another quite scary thing I learned, there is a smallpox facts sheet here. And uh, apparently smallpox, very dangerous disease, it got eradicated, but for the fact that both the Americans and the Russians decided to keep smallpox in laboratories. 
to, I don't know, unleash or something in the case of a biological warfare scenario. But at least in France, since it is uh, basically eradicated smallpox, no one has been vaccinated since 1980. I don't know how it looks in other countries. Uh, it is written in French because Piero mainly writes and uh, speaks in French. But uh, I found that quite scary at the same time. You know, if you have a lot of people not being vaccinated against a very dangerous thing. Now, I'm not a fan of vaccines per se, but uh, if smallpox comes back, I would definitely want to ensure that everyone I care about is um, um, is vaccinated against it. So, um, yeah, a bit of uh, an eye-opener there in terms of biological warfare. And I actually have a little quote here from someone who I am not a fan of in the list. You know, when I was in my teens and the Iraq war started, etc. He was basically the devil incarnate because he, he didn't start, but he... Uh, you know, aggravated the situation in the Middle East, and that's the US President George W. Bush. And he said in um, 28th of April in 2004, and I quote him, Bioterrorism is a real threat to our country. It's a threat to every nation that loves freedom. Terrorist groups seek biological weapons. We know some rogue states already have them. It's important that we confront these real threats to our country and prepare for future emergencies. So yeah, not a fan of him, but um, it's a quite good prediction. And uh, I don't want to say anything in regards to the corona now, whether it was intentional or an accident, etc. But, you know, battles of this century will probably not be any heroic um, battles between even armies. It will probably be quite gruesome and horrible sort of... Uh, Warfare, uh, biological, who knows, it wouldn't surprise me that, you know, one nation does this sort of thing against another nation. It's not something we should rule out. And I'm not a doctor, I won't speculate any further into this. I have no idea, but I'm just throwing it out there. If you look at it from a historical, if you look at it from a historical perspective, it wouldn't be strange if one nation decided to you know, create a virus or a bacteria that is extra damaging to a uh, group of people, say Caucasian men. So uh, yeah, that's something to keep in mind as well. Now the book also contains a bit of practical knowledge you have in the, the end of the book, you have a list of things you can, you can buy to stay safe in all of these scenarios. So um, yeah, it can come in handy. And also in regards to the World Health Organization, the following measures can aid in prevention of uh, the spread of viruses. So covering mouth and nose, yeah, seems reasonable. Avoid close contact with those who are sick. Yeah, also seems uh, quite reasonable and uh, nothing revolutionary there. Mask and PPE healthcare setting. Hand washing and standard hygiene measures. So, you know, quite basic advice, but still good advice. There are a lot of people who do not take their hygiene, do not take their hand hygiene particularly seriously. I always do because, you know, I don't want to be caught with a man cold either because I don't have the time or capacity to be out for a week. Um, so I always try to maintain a good hand hygiene. I always have alcohol gel in my car or in my bag. So if I've been to the gym or somewhere, I just take it immediately and, you know, make sure to wash your entire hand with uh, soap so you don't just put some on the hand and rub, you know, do it thoroughly and you will reduce the risk of um, infection. And even if we're not talking about a horrible coronavirus or anything, but we can just talk about common cold, we don't want to have that either. Then also something I thought to mention and, uh, you know, when I read this, it's a um, journalist called Richard Preston who has studied the virus, describes its effects, and then it's, um, you know, a report from the journalist, and uh, it makes for quite gruesome reading, and if I ever make, uh, if I write a fantasy or science fiction novel, and I describe a an outbreak of something, I will definitely consult this uh, horror story, because it is quite gruesome in description, it's about Ebola, the Ebola, the 2013 to 2015 Ebola outbreak in West Africa. Um, so yeah, I won't go into the technicalities of it, but quite gruesome stuff. And when you read about all of these things, you um, 
I don't want to blackpill or uh, be overly dramatic, but you get a different perspective on things and uh, yeah, you, you want to think about your hygiene a bit more. So basically, in terms of a book review, I can recommend this. I think it's a really informative and good book and contains a lot of practical um, information. And I will at some point also go through the, um, the other three parts of it. So the chemical, radiological and nuclear. I will say though a little YouTube channel recommendation here if you want to know more about Chernobyl. Piero has also been in Chernobyl, by the way, uh, and he talks a bit about it. But if you want to look at a channel, you have Bald and Bankrupt. Now, he doesn't need any shout-out from me because his channel is much bigger, but it's sort of like an extreme tourism channel. So he goes to Chernobyl, visits it, looks around. It's quite interesting, actually. And, you know, he's an entertaining guy as well, so it's a good, good thing if you have a lot of time on your hands. So, if you want to order it... Please do so via Free Speech Library. I say this because it's a good mate of mine who has the page and I'd rather that you buy it from him than someone else. Uh, so yeah, uh, good book, good book. That's uh, my thoughts on, um, of course, plenty of other things you can say about it when you read the entire thing, but uh, I just wanted to quickly recommend it since it's, um, it's a good um, topic. So thank you for watching and I hope you all stay safe. XXO, boom.